time. What, do you happen to remember what this might be representing in the cell? Nucleus. My nucleus. Okay? So by moving directly through the cell membrane, guess where the receptor is going to be now? Nucleus. It's going to be on the nucleus. That's just for steroids. This is for a lipid soluble because they, which are most of the steroids? So, so then, does that mean that we talked about how they can genetically change the cell? Exactly. So that's genetically changed. This is going to affect the actual DNA because it has a nuclear receptor. That means the receptor is on the nucleus, located in the nucleus are our chromosomes. The only target they have are the chromosomes. So therefore, these target the DNA directly. Good example, testosterone. That one is gonna be a sex steroid, for example. What it's going to do, it's going to go in, it's going to have the direct effect on the DNA and therefore will be a direct effect on the proteins that get produced by that cell. So that's a good example for the testosterone playing a part in secondary sex characteristics of a male. Does everybody know what I mean by the secondary sex characteristics? The development of the genitalia, okay? They bind to that nuclear receptor and they're gonna be able to have an actual effect on the muscular mass, for example, of the man. The genitalia production. Now, if we look at something like the ones made from amino acids. These are gonna be water soluble, all right? They're gonna have their receptor on that plasma membrane. Think about epinephrine. Epinephrine quickly produced, circulates quickly throughout the body, and it's gonna be accepted by the cells on that cellular membrane. And because it's something that is sympathetic, it's going to affect stuff like our heart rate, respiration rate, because it's getting us ready for the fight or flight. The ones that are peptides and glycoproteins, for the most part, they're water soluble. And when we look at those, they tend to have a short lifespan. Um, their job get bound to the receptor on their target cells. And if they get bound to the receptor, they activate the G protein complex. Activating that G protein complex means they're going to affect other stuff in the cell. And the effect is something to the overall production of that cell. A good example, glucagon, insulin, okay? These were, well now insulin was a full protein, but it's a large protein. Glucagon was a smaller peptide bond, okay? And what did that do? That went to the liver to promote the breakdown of the glycogen to form a glucose molecule. So these are going to be water soluble. So their, I guess you could say, their transport in the blood, this is how they're going to get transported. So they're either going to be bound or unbound. So let's kind of look at what they're trying to show me here in this picture. They're representing a blood
blood vessel right here. We've got some of the red blood cells, then we've got some of the blue, the white, and the yellow. Now, let's follow what this endocrine cell right here produced. This endocrine cell is producing something that's lipid soluble. Therefore, it moves into the bloodstream because that's where the hormone has to go, okay? So it's moving into the bloodstream. See how they're trying to show the representation of that lipid soluble hormone? They've got that structure right there. Now, what did we say about lipid soluble? For the most part, do it, man? Hmm? Moves through the membrane. Moves the membrane, but as it's circulating in the blood, how is it going to travel? Bound. Or um, bound for the most part. And if it binds, what's it binding to? Um, the, glo the globe. The globulin. So that globulin is the binding protein. Now just watch what happens, okay? This one produced lipid soluble. I have my globulins here in the bloodstream. They begin to attach to my lipid soluble molecule. They're gonna travel in the bloodstream. They're showing it traveling, being bound to the globulin. And now we've got this unbinding because it could be reversible binding that took place. So we've now made it to a cell that needs or has the receptors for that hormone. So that hormone will unbind. It gets to move directly through the plasma membrane because it's lipid soluble receptors are where? In the nucleus. So it's gonna bind and it's gonna have a direct effect on the DNA. Yes, no, maybe? Now, let's follow this one. This is my endocrine cell. Its product, water-soluble. So it gets released into the circulatory system because that's how they travel. It's free, it's unbound, just flying around, moving with the flow, okay? Gets to a cell that has its receptor on it the receptor accepts that particular hormone. It can only bind at that receptor in the membrane. It'll start that G protein complex and it'll begin to affect what takes place in the cell. So they travel as either being bound or unbound for the protein transport. Yes, no, maybe? Okay. So when the hormone reaches a target cell, let's just follow our flow chart. If the hormone has a nuclear receptor, lipid soluble, the receptor's on the nucleus, the only thing it can do is affect the genes, affect the DNA. Therefore, we get the new synthesis of a protein or an enzyme, and that cell is gonna respond with that new protein or enzyme. If the membrane bound, they're water soluble. If the receptor activates the G proteins, G proteins can open or close ion channels they can affect existing enzymes. They're altered. The cell responds with the altered product. From the membrane bound, if it goes on to affect intracellular activity, that still affects the product getting created and the cell responds. These are the ways that the hormone is going to act. When we produce hormones, we do not need a lot of hormone to be produced. 
because hormones amplify their signal. So the hormones in the body that get produced, hopefully they're only produced in small amounts. When we have that hormone that gets produced, hopefully in small amounts, okay, When the hormone binds and it affects the G protein complex, it can affect a whole bunch of them. If it can affect a whole bunch of the G protein, it will affect a whole bunch of the enzymes that get produced, the product. If the enzymes can get affected, that will affect a whole bunch of the product. And then the cell releases that product that's now altered. So we might have needed one here, one hormone, but we got 10 molecules as the result because of what's termed signal amplification. Hormone concentrations, for the most part, in the blood are at low levels. However, for a lot of them, they have developed um, blood test to test for them. That's how specific we've kind of gotten with some of them. The tissue, that's their target tissue for these chemicals. Do you guys remember specificity? Okay, that's just telling us that that hormone, where it binds on the receptor, that receptor is specific. It will only accept or bind that one hormone. The goal is that the tissues of the body only, okay, the ones that are the target tissues are the only ones who have the receptors. If we end up with receptors on other cells, or if the product is produced in too great of an amount, things go bad. But we'll stop right there for today and I'll finish this tomorrow and we'll start 18.